so far in my experience of life, I have found that the world may want to push you in certain directions into thinking things about yourself that you might personally not believe in. And it might try to persuade you and convince you to doubt yourself and make you question yourself. And what I found is that things like being powerless and things like being a slave to the world or feeling small, it comes from within us. Seeing the world through the eyes of the inner man, as Neville has described, has been something that I feel like I've awakened to. And I don't see reality the same way. I don't see myself just as a physical being, but as a mental one. I see that I do a lot of things within myself. I see that I act in certain ways within myself, inside my own imagination. And one of the ways I've interacted within myself has been feeling powerless within myself. Feeling like a slave inside my own mind. And this has been something that I've struggled with for a long time. And I didn't know how to free myself. I didn't understand what it meant to free myself because I thought I myself was only the physical form. I didn't have a map inside of me. I didn't know where I was going. And this is where desire plays such a key role is find a purpose or find a desire in life and fulfill it. Because if you don't have one, it's it's just better to know where you're going than to try to figure, you know, guess it around and try to just jump on this bus and that bus. You should probably know the bus you're going to go on. Know what state you want instead of wondering, spending so much time wondering. I, I understand there's times to learn about yourself and understand what it is you want, but it's imperative that you find it because you have the ability to fulfill it. And you know this through Neville's work. And as I said, interacting within myself as a slave has been not beneficial to me. I found certain thoughts in me that were really wonderful and beautiful, but I never felt, for some reason, I felt worthy to create them, but I never felt worthy to have them. I didn't find it necessarily wrong that I thought of something wonderful about myself but there was a level of feeling that I can't just have that. It was too good to be true about me. But I had such a limited scope on what self was. I thought self was reduced to behaviors. That's what I was taught. Whatever my behaviors were, that's myself. Or whatever my feelings are, that's myself. Or whatever my thoughts are, that's myself. But Neville helped peel the layers back, and I saw that I am the creator of my own thoughts. And I'm creating like a slave. I'm creating like somebody who's powerless within myself. I'm imagining things as if they're meant for someone else and not me. That the good thing is for someone better than me. I mean, I was pushed towards an edge where I wished I was always somebody else. I could tell other people were more free. You know, I I would get jealous looking at the birds and just wishing I was a bird. I felt envious of it. But I had such a limited perspective on what self was. I felt stuck within myself. I felt that whatever it is I wanted to be felt so out of reach. And when it came close to me, I felt I couldn't take it. I felt I had to remain small inside. As it says... We were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And that is the relationship between man's inner world and his outer world. That they truly are one, but one has the ability within to manipulate or to, I don't like using that word, but to change. You learn to start freeing that inner man who feels like a slave. You start within your own imagination. That is where you begin. And so that beginning point that Neville gave 
was very important to me. It allowed me to have a starting point. And then from there, I had noticed patterns inside of myself, just like how I noticed patterns in the world. I noticed these patterns in me. And these, there is a pattern that when I would fear a thought, it was this inability to say no to it. And I didn't have this word within me. I didn't, like I said, I felt like a slave. So I felt a slave to every thought. My relationship with thought was one in which reminded me of how powerless I feel. And so I repeated that pattern over and over again. And it was like learning Neville was very difficult because he provided so much power at first, but I had no control of it. It's like I knew for a fact that I was creating these thoughts and yet I couldn't stop doing it. And I didn't see the relationship between how I feel and the thoughts that I'm creating. And it wasn't until I started to feel more powerful, my thoughts became calmer. They became more, it became easier to imagine myself within the fulfillment of my desire. It became easier. I didn't feel, I didn't feel like it was a robbery for me to take within myself. I didn't, at first I did, but then I started to realize that no matter what I think, it's my own thought that I'm allowed to have. And reason, which really is just whatever society has taught me to believe, will tell me to reject that. And that is me rejecting myself. If I imagine myself being something and I become that, then myself is within me. And so I don't need to look any further to change myself. I don't have to wait upon anyone. And this is the good news that Neville tries to offer. And so the ability to let go of the powerlessness that I've felt, that I felt obligated to carry, letting that go has been it's been been actually very difficult, but also it's very simple. And that's what I found in this type of work. It's very easy to understand once you get it. But for some reason, it can take a lot of repetition to get it. The idea that within my own self, I was a slave. And I changed the way I thought of myself, and I changed the way I imagined it's very simple. It just takes some practice. And believe me, I understand practice because I've done this for a long time now. I started from a very, very low position. That is what I'm trying to say. Is that I started from a low position within imagination. I did not feel worthy pretty much of anything good in it. And I realized how much of a lie that was. I truly believed in a lie. And I lived upon that lie. And so don't let reason be your God. Don't let the world dictate, don't let the appearances dictate what it is that you are or what it is you're allowed to accept within. Because if you do that, you're going to be, you're not going to be able to see past your own appearance, your own, your own eyes, your own eyelashes, as it says. How can you change if you depend on the appearances? How can you change if your self is dependent on senses? And so when you free self from reason, from the senses, you embark on the true voyage of life, and it's the voyage of self. And you will start to naturally create new things for yourself that you won't feel unworthy of. Just as an artist signs their painting, you will see your signature attached to the thought. You'll see your, you will see its maker, and it'll be yourself. And so, truly, the the lie is to believe you're powerless, and for power is attached to you. It's an attribute. You can't have power without you. Power doesn't exist. And so start going inward and find yourself in there and see where it is you've placed yourself. And as Abdullah told Neville, never shame self, but change self. He says, find self, but never shame it. Just change. 